I'm at a gypsy. So, yeah, are we going kind of in the right direction? Because it sort of seems like you don't, no one really gets a say in it in a way. Like you get the bike and it's like, this is how it works. And, you know, you can see that the new Honda, which you're on, but like uh, Kenny has said that that thing just doesn't really work in the whoops. And then it's like you got Chase all last year was fighting that bike. So it's like, all right, where's the feedback coming from? Like, is it just, there's the bike, make it work. And if that's the case, are they getting better? Um, it's so It's hard to say really, because when you think back, like I don't think the bikes have improved that much sort of from when my first year, say 2006 and that Kawasaki, I think back and I thought, bike's pretty good, like, can't remember it ever being bad and then none of the bikes I've ever rode have ever been ever been bad I think I think everything has got a lot better so the standard bike's better and it seems that everyone um like in on the line I think now no one has a bad bike sort of thing where I think before having a factory bike was um a little bit more crucial or I don't know it may be like a factory bike now is more crucial it's it's difficult to say because there was times at the GP where people could get a good result on an on a semi factory bike or mm. like a um, a production bike. I remember when Paul Sale came over. Obviously, he's um, he's a different um, guy who's just unreal on a bike. But he came and he was like, "I just want standard engine. I want standard suspension. I just want it like this, revalved." And and he would then still rip a whole shot somehow and win GPs. But I just don't think that's possible now. Mm. On um, on the standard bike, maybe like the odd race, you see the the guy get a good result on like a production based bike. But I think it's it's so. What I find from the factory bikes is that the difference is you can make mistakes and there, you barely make a mistake. Like you can be in the wrong gear, but every gear pulls. Like you should be second there, but oh, you forgot to change. You've forgot to change down. You've hit something. You're in third, but still pulls in third. And I think that's why for one overall lap you can rip on rip on as like a standard bike but then when you want to do it every single lap of a, a 30 minute ro- moto or imagine the same sort of thing in in a supercross um being on that factory bike just your your race is so much easier like i remember when i was on a non-factory bike trying to race gps the last year and i'd hang into a race for like 15 minutes then they would edge away and then when i got the chance to ride uh, a factory kawasaki at the end of 2019 um or 18 i can't remember 19 i think the difference was you'd you'd just ride around the track behind people and you'd just be like, fucking hell, this is easy. Like, how have I not done this all year? But for some reason, the bike um, just allowed you to do that. Like, you didn't have to try half as hard. You just, everything, the bike drove that much better. So when you'd normally land and land with a bit of a bang, mm. lose that momentum, the, the factory bike pushed you forward, um, always, always driving forward. And then that over a race distance uh, saved you so much time and kept you in the fight. But going back to it, the bikes have moved forward. It's hard to say or move forward in the right way. I think, fuck, I, I really don't know, to be honest. Like, I just get what I'm, yeah. I rode. Like, I like the Honda now at this moment in time. I've got the suspension really good because it's a company by me, um, KTEC, K-Tech they do it all. Yeah, yeah really, um, they do. They have a big, I think, presence now pushing in Australia yeah. as well. But a really good company. Um we've just worked locally and and not even done much because it's five minutes up the road but barely done anything really but just fine-tuned what they've got um and the good people there so but in general the bike's good like there's not really much i want more from my bike especially yet because i one because i know i'm racing in the uk and no one's on factory bikes so it makes a difference like australia no one i don't think's on factory bikes are they really not really like it's pretty no. much like as good as you can make a production bike by buying yeah. like kit suspension and i think i think the guys get factory tires um or yeah. like a version of factory tires but yes yeah, exactly the same as uk i mean we don't get factory tires but honestly i'm, I'm not really fussed like i've never moaned about a tire in my life and i don't really think a factory tire makes too much difference but the difference of that that top level i really don't know i think it's fine tuning it and as you get a little bit older someone like ken he knows what he likes um i actually spoke with him a little bit last year and and he mentioned he was struggling with some things but i think you just get older and you you've had crashes and you only push when you're more comfortable yeah Do you know he's not willing to push when he's not comfortable and that's sort of how i feel there were some races last year where i was like i'm not comfortable so I can't push and I think that's the position he's in rather than it being like 
the bike's obviously not bad. He's on a factory bike, like the bike's good. Um, but if he's not comfortable, he's not willing to push where you get someone that's a little bit younger and they don't know what they like or don't yeah. like, they're like yeah. factory Honda, like I'm ripping this thing. Like, is it good? And you just, you come in first test and you're like, fucking bike's unreal. Mm. Um, but when you get a little bit older, you realize what you like and then you, you don't like to push unless you're 100% comfortable. And I think that's what you see in an older rider um, or a more experienced rider like Ken who's had crashes. Um, but I don't know about the bikes in general. I really, it's hard to say, isn't it? Like you see them and everyone's ripping. I think one thing is that they they do everything so good and I think that's why people crash sometimes out of the blue is because you expect the bike mm. to do, you expect it to do everything. Like, And then when it kicks you out of the blue, you go fucking hell the thing nearly kicked me over the handlebars whereas before no one would be seat bouncing that jump in the first place like everyone would be stood up and um they'd set up for it and they'd be in the right gear where now they're like oh i, I seat bounce that in first you're like well all right then i seat bounce that in second it just wouldn't happen before you'd come out the corner you'd select your gear you'd make sure there was no bump or kicker in your line you'd stand up and you'd hit the jump where now i think people um it catches people off guard and when the bike kicks them they're like fucking things kicking me all over the place. Like, but you're sat down, you're hitting a jump. Yeah. Um, but you you just expect it to do whatever you want it to do. Where um, whereas beforehand you expect that kick. Like if you're hitting a kicker, you're ready for it to kick. You stood up, and you expect it. Where now people expect nothing. Like you expect to. Even me, you, this, if there's bumps coming into a corner, like you just fucking stand up and you just hit them. You're like, <laughs> if it kicks you, you're like, fucking bikes kicking me over these bumps. <laughs> like. You're just like, do something with this fucking thing. Like, it's just kicked me coming into a corner where before it's um, it's expected, yeah, you know? Like, yeah. oh, the bike feels good into that corner. It's barely even kicking me. Where now, like, the bike goes sideways. You want to fucking throw it through the awning <laughs> when you get to the back to the truck. You're like, fucking thing nearly had me off. Oh. And I think that's the difference now. Dude, you're so right. The The first day, my last, like, injury, I broke my fucking hip. I was jumping the tiniest double on this track on a slow lap just completely faffing and i was running this bike in and i've just seat bounced it it's kicked the tiniest bit sideways but i was like fuck it it doesn't matter you can <laughs> land sideways on these things brand yeah. brand new bike was stiff as a fucking board and the thing has just taken me for an absolute ride and then i just got unlucky with the fence that was there so then i've had to turn away from the fence and gas the fucking thing to get away from this fence and then it stepped out on me and then i've hit a lip and i've just this tiny little crash turned into a huge yard sale that broke my hip. But it was exactly what you said because I was just like, sideways, this doesn't matter. I fucking land sideways off every single jump and the bike's always yeah. fine. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the problem with us as riders. We expect um, we expect it to just do anything we want. Like, There's never a time where you're like, I can't hit that. Yeah. Like, I can't do that. I can't seat bounce that. You can do people, the pro riders now are fucking out. They seat bounce every jump. Um out on the track so it's one of those um yeah i don't know i think almost the bikes are too good and then when they're you, that's why people crash now because you just expect it to do everything yeah like you hit and you hit everything so fast you don't slow down the, the bumps don't slow you down anymore yeah like they um lap times don't even change through the bumps if you enjoyed this content please like and subscribe and to listen to the full three-hour podcast search gypsy tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below gypsy gang